Hello everyone, I think uh, we are uh, ready to start. So um, let me introduce myself. My name is Sim Kunan, Technical Engineer of Midas IT from Headquarter. So first of all, thank you for joining our webinar today. So today's webinar, the topic is high speed to efficient design uh, using dynamic analysis. So today's webinar, um, I will talk about the uh, basic cap capabilities of dynamic analysis of high-speed train on bridge structure using Mother Civil. And I will show you how this can be done in Mother Civil and also how to check various results to see its effect on the structure. So this is the contents of the today's webinar. So first I will talk about how and when the dynamic, dynamic analysis is required for your project. And the second is how to set up the eigenvalue analysis and how to set up the mass data for the structure for eigenvalue analysis. And then I will show you how to create time history load cases and then how to apply structural damping to the uh, to your model. And I will also show you how to generate train load uh, using both uh, dynamic analysis method, uh, this function called train load generator. And also I will generate train load using static moving load analysis function in minus by the civil. And then I will apply these train loads generated from train load generator uh, using dynamic uh, nodal load function in minus civil. And then once we up, uh, input all these factors and all this data, I will show you how to check those results and compare with uh, dynamic analysis and static analysis. And now we'll finish off with a simple quick demonstration of all of this. So the presentation will only take about 20 minutes and I think the demonstration will take about 20 minutes as well. And to finish off five to 10 minutes of Q&A sessions will be done at the end. So first of all, so basically dynamic analysis can be performed whenever you find this is relevant or not for your project. Also, you can also perform dynamic analysis when your clients, normally your clients or any other authorities or organization in charge, they normally test for this type of analysis. Apart from that, you can also refer to the underlying, underlying statement from the Eurocode. So basically, your code provide us some sort of steps for us to decide whether the dynamic analysis is required for your project or not. So engineers can decide whether the dynamic analysis is relevant on this, uh, based on this uh, algorithm. So first of all, so uh, complexity of your structure or maximum line speed uh, value. So if maximum line speed value are higher than 200 kilo, kilometers per hour, or if the structure is com uh, complicated or it is simple. So these kind of stuff can be used to determine whether the dynamic analysis is required or not. And also um, we are interested in the vibration properties of the structure by comparing the natural torsional frequency. So uh, comparing between uh, natural frequency, natural tor torsional frequency of the structure and then the natural bending frequency of the structure, these kind of um, relationship can be also used to determine the, uh, whether dynamic analysis is required or not. And uh, lastly, also maximum nominal speed can also be used to determine whether the dynamic analysis should be considered or not. Uh, just to uh, uh, let you guys know, if you have any questions, uh, you can write it on the question um, question section in the webinar uh, platform, and then I will try to answer the questions at the end of the uh, demonstration. So if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to write it on the question uh, section. Okay, moving on. So in order to perform dynamic analysis, uh, it is mandatory. So you need to, it is required to perform eigenvalue analysis before. So therefore, there are a number of eigenvalue analysis types available in Mother Civil. The first one 
is subspace iteration. So it is most commonly used, I guess, and very effective for uh, large structures. And the second one is Lantus. So it is very effective and efficient for the lower mode. And the last one is Rich Vector. And it calculates the vibration properties from the load case, uh, from the whatever the load case that we defined. And it produces a reliable result with fewer modes. So uh, in today's webinar, we'll, uh, I will use uh, this one, subspace iteration. So um, in order to perform eigenvalue analysis, you got to have a mass data. So you need to have some sort of a structural mass information in order to perform eigenvalue analysis. So uh, you can define the mass data using various methods in Mother Sibyl again. So the first one is lumped mass. So distribution of the mass is concentrated at the node level. So we will have some sort of a diagonal matrix of the masses with the mass lumped at the node level. And then if you are using consistent mass, the mass matrix here is quite similar to uh, stiffness matrix. So the masses are distributed all the way along the element, not just lumped at the node level. So the masses are distributed along the element if you're using consistent mass. And also there are various ways to um, apply masses from the load information applied to the structure. So stuff like self-weight, uh, like um, already existing on the structure. So you can use this function convert self rate into masses. So if you use this function, you can directly specify the direction, like convert to x, y, z, x, y, and z. So it will use the weight density information um, from the material properties that you defined, and it will automatically calculate the self rate into masses. Along with self rate, uh, other, lo other load cases can also be defined defined and also be converted such as a node load or beam load, flow load or pressure. So all of these um, load cases, so whatever the load cases that you have, and you can select it here and then you can put down the scale factor and then the directions as well. So if you use this, you can so sort of convert whatever the load cases that you have into the mass data. And also for other load type, you can directly add the mass data using the using nodal masses function. So once you have set up, once you have finished setting up the eigenvalue analysis and the mass data, you can now define the time history load cases. So this is example of time history load case dialog in Mother Sybil. You can define uh, you can also define linear and nonlinear time history load case. Uh, the good thing about uh, time history load case in Mother Sybil is you can uh, define several time history load cases within one model, considering different train speed and different type of time history analysis. So uh, in order to compare the dynamic analysis result for different uh, train speed, you don't have to have a several different model file to obtain these results. You can have a several different time history load cases with which is which assign which which has different train speed for each of them. So you can obtain uh, various uh, result of uh, different time history load cases within one model. Uh, we can perform a linear and nonlinear time history analysis. So for linear, linear type of linear analysis type, you can choose either model or direct integration for the analysis method. And you can choose transient and periodic for time history type. And if you want to perform nonlinear time history analysis, uh, you can choose uh, model, direct integration, and static. So you can choose all of these analysis type, but you can only choose transient for the time history type uh, 
for the nonlinear time history load cases. So now it is important to know what type of excitation it is excitation is applied to the structure. So you need to know what type of loading we have to apply to the structure. So if you are considering earthquake or train load or pedestrian walking or jogging, we need to uh, choose transient type, transient time history type. However, if you for for example, if you're using if you're considering a machinery like with those which has some sort of a cyclic loading and if, um, pedestrian crowd loads, so these should be applied using periodic time history type. So today um, we'll be uh, applying transient time history type uh, train load using a linear with the model analysis type method. Moving on, one of the most complicated item to consider this type of analysis is damping. So there are four types of uh, damping options are available in Midas Civil. The first one is the model. It is most commonly used and also the most basic one. Um, it, also specified, it is also specified in uh, Eurocode for critical damping as well. And the method that we will be using today is mass and stiffness proportional. So damping can be applied pro proportional to mass or stiffness uh, information that you in, you put. So if damping matrix is created by using uh, this method, damping matrix becomes a diagonal matrix. So the biggest advantage of this method is that it uses smaller memory. So the amount of the calculation decreases quite significantly. So a huge amount of time can be saved. So I will be using this method today. Uh, mass and stiffness proportional and uh, strain energy proportional and animal mass and stiffness proportional also known also known as Rayleigh damping so these math uh, these damping methods are applied for more complicated structures so structures with various material properties so where which where each of them have different damping properties so it is uh, required to define the group damping for each material to apply for this type of uh, damping method. So or when we use dampers or isolator in the structure, we'll be using this method as well. Uh, before moving on, um, uh, for the uh, time increment, it is uh, recommended to use uh, one tenth of the highest the period of the highest mode for the initial value. So it is recommended to use one tenth of the period of the highest mode for the initial value of the time increment. However, the natural frequency of the, of the trend can be quite influential. So it is required to try smaller time increment and see if the result converges or not. And for frequency for the mode one and mode two, so mode one will be using the lowest mode, uh, the frequency of the lowest mode, and mode two will be using the frequency of the, the highest mode after eigenvalue analysis. Also, Eurocode help us, helps us to choose what dampings to be applied to the structure. So damping in this table is dependent on bridge type and the span length. Uh, today, our example is using the steel, uh, st it is steel bridge, and the span length is more than 20 meters. So the lower limit of a percentage of critical damping is 0.5%. So this will be 0.005 effect. Also, for the span less than 20 meters, uh, we need to apply uh, additional damping in order to avoid the resonance effect. So we need to I uh, use this equation. Um, so if the span length is less than 20 meters, we need to use this equation to get this additional damping. And then use this, um, the total damping for the structure, damping on your structure, on your project. <coughs> so once we have set up the time history load cases, we, we can then uh, we have to uh, continue adding the load using 
function called train load generator. So this is the function called train load generator. So with this function, you can create any type of train loading. So if you have specific type of train loading, it can be generated relatively easily from this function. So uh, the example today we have is high speed load mode of A. So and if we and we can define the XL number and the length, the spacing between the XLs, and the corresponding force values. So all of these uh, values um, you can just simply input into this function and then create a train load. And also, if you have this uh, data in terms of Excel, you can just simply import this onto this function and then use it. You just have to define the train velocity and the element size. And then the pro uh, this function will generate the train load automatically. And then what you have to do is this can be exported to time history forcing function. So this is the example, uh, dialog of time history forcing function. And then we can continue with applying the load by using dynamic load, load the load. So once we have uh, time, time history load cases and the train load are generated using the train load generator to the time history forcing function, we can um, we need to apply these time history load cases into the structure using dynamic node load function. So this is the example of dynamic node load function. You just have to choose the time history load cases you defined earlier, and then you need to choose what sort of forcing functions that you will be using. And then of course, you will be applying the structure in a vertical direction, so uh, direction uh, global Z and minus one. So what you have to do is you will have to sort of apply this uh, dynamic node load all the way along the deck. So think of but thinking of doing these uh, steps individually uh, by all the, all the nodes separately it is quite tedious and time consuming. So what uh, I will introduce today is um, I will introduce how to use uh, MCT command shell efficiently. So MCT command shell is you can just think this as a you can input data in the text format. So all the functions and all the information in my server can be inputted uh, using this uh, MCT command shell in this sort of a text format. And then you can just simply um, utilize Excel to generate these sort of um, series of data and then you can just copy it and then paste it into this and then you'll be very, um, it will be very easy to generate these sort of data uh, at once. Uh, I will show you how to do this in demonstration step by step. So once we have performed the analysis, uh, result checking should be done. So first we need to check the vibration properties of the structure. So these uh, vibration properties, the mod mod model shape can be reviewed in uh, both graphical way and table format way, table format. So we need to make sure that the mass participation is over 90% so that we have adequate number of modes to check the structure. The model participation uh, will be checked in uh, global Z direction uh, in today's example. And then next, uh, we need to continue checking the result of dynamic analysis. So deck acceleration is uh, very important for preventing deck track stabil instabilities, so such as like ballast instability, and also it is very important to improve the passenger's com comfort. It can be checked for each node along the deck, uh, creating nodal time history of acceleration against the time. So this is an example of acceleration, so deck acceleration against the time. And then, as I mentioned, you can uh, have more than one time history function. So these have a uh, different train speed. So you can uh, check these results uh, together if you want to. And deck acceleration against the time. And you can also review the peak deck acceleration against the frequency. So these um, can be checked. Also, you would like to make sure that the excitation from the load does not match with the natural frequency. 
So if it matches with the natural frequency of the structure, there will be resonance effects. So we would like to avoid this sort of issue. The result can also be outputted in graphical format as well as the table format, as I mentioned. And it can be also exported onto Excel as well. So if you export this um, sort of data into Excel, you get all these uh, numerical values of this dynamic analysis result. So you can also use uh, Excel to uh, use for your uh, own spreadsheet as well. Also, uh, forces and deformation need to be checked. Uh, so Eurocode states that uh, we need to check the result of dynamic analysis with the result of the static analysis enhanced by the, enhanced by the dynamic factor. So basically, um, we'll be creating this train load using dynamic, uh, dynamic northern load and also we'll be creating the same thing using the static uh, moving load analysis function in other civil. So we need to make comparison of the result between the dynamic and static analysis of the train load. So user can uh, directly define a high speed load model vehicle from a big vehicle for static moving load analysis in other civil. And also if you choose LM1, so LM1 of SW0 or SW2 can also be defined where the dynamic factor can automatically um, calculate it simply defining the determinant length and the uh, quality of track maintenance. Just like moving load analysis, uh, time history envelope analysis result is available, which can be directly used in the load combination as well. So uh, towards the end of our demonstration, I will show you, I will uh, simply compare the uh, displacement result of the time history load, uh, time history analysis result and the moving load analysis result as well. So for today's demonstration, uh, we have excluded this some sort of a basic modeling part. So Basic modeling part is not ex ex included in today's webinar, and I will try to focus on how to perform eigenvalue analysis, moving load analysis, as well as dynamic analysis, and then finish off uh, with just quick checking various results. Okay. So um, as I mentioned, the basic. Uh, structure has been already prepared uh, by me. So the modeling part is not included in today's webinar. So this is um, steel bridge. And then I will start from how to apply uh, eigenvalue analysis as well. So I have already defined uh, all the materials and section properties and the boundary conditions to this structure. So let me just quickly um, add on the load information. So let's add self rate onto the structure using the self rate function. <coughs> so click self rate and minus one direction and click add. And also I will apply the secondary dead load. So superimpose dead load onto the structure as precisely on the deck. So let me just quickly add this beam load onto the deck. So superimpose that load or secondary that load is applied onto the deck like this. Okay, so let's deactivate this on display. So uh, as I mentioned, we'll be using subspace iteration method. So we need to go to analysis and eigenvalue. And we'll be using subspace iteration method. And number of frequency, let's just, uh, I have just begin with, um, I have begun with a, a large number, 80, and subspace dimension, 180, and press OK. And as I mentioned, um, in order to perform the 
eigenvalue analysis, you need to have uh, the best data. So in order to provide best data onto the structure, we need to go to the structure tab, structure type. And then if you um, click this fun click this option, convert sulfate into masses, you can then convert sulfate into masses in the global Z direction. So click OK. And also if you would if you would like to convert the second secondary uh, dead load, superimposed dead load into masses, you can use uh, load to masses function. So go to load tab and then there's a static load, then click load to masses function. And okay. we quickly Let me close my presentation uh, first. Okay, so if we click load to masses, we can then uh, choose the load case, so secondary dead load. We can choose this and then we can select the direction, and then the scale factor, and if we click add, uh, we can then uh, convert this uh, load information into masses. So we click OK. So now we have the uh, mass data and then we have converted this mass data uh, load information into the mass data and then we now have our eigenvalue, we now have set it up the eigenvalue analysis. Now um, we will uh, generate the train load using train load generator. So go to tools and data generator. There's a function called train load generator. So click this. And if you click generate, you can then um, generate the train load uh, using this dialog. So if you go to user define, you can define your train load information here. And if I have some sort of um, a train load, uh, the load model data in terms of Excel file. So this is the, the information that I have. So number of axles and the spacing between the axles and then corresponding force value. So you can use this um, Excel information and then you can just simply import it onto this function. Okay. Um, so you can just simply import it onto this function using this. You just have to define the train velocity, let's uh, write it as 300 kilometers per hour, and element size, uh, let's down as five and then if you click OK you can see that train load has been generated automatically so you can save this um, uh, in terms of TGS file so that you can use this later on in time forcing functions as well so let's close this so once you have defined uh, once you have created the train load uh, now let's create train time history load cases. So first go to load, load tab and click dynamic load. And then go to time history function. So let's create time forcing function based on the train load that you just gen we just generated. So click import. And then we can then see um, the train load are uh, generated just now. So you can just simply open this. And then you can see that this has been imported onto this time history forcing function. And let's click OK and close. Now let's go to uh, load cases to generate the time history load case. So click add. And let's name it as time history uh, load cases 300 kilometers per hour. And then we will be using linear model and transition time history type. And let's define this end time as maybe 10 seconds. And as I mentioned, the time increment, um, 
the initial time increment, uh, the value is recommended to use uh, one tenth of the period of the highest mode after the eigenvalue analysis. So I have performed the eigenvalue analysis for this structure previous to this webinar, and then the frequent the period of highest mode was 0.02, so we'll be using 0.002, and I think this is small enough. Uh, to give us a precise result. And for damping, damping method, we'll be using mass and stiffness proportional. So we'll choose this. And calculate uh, from uh, model damping. Uh, you can also have a uh, mode one and mode two. The frequency of mode one and mode two will be uh, the frequency of the lowest mode after the eigenvalue analysis. And uh, mode two, Frequency will be the frequency of the highest mode after the eigenvalue analysis. So let's. This was around 1.894, and then this was around 50. So let's choose this. And then, uh, for the damping method, a uh, damping ratio 0 0.005 will be applied, and then 0 0.005. Five will be applied here as well, and uh, co co coefficient of the damping uh, is automatically automatically calculated here. And then click OK. So now we have created time history load cases, and then close. So now we uh, we need to apply uh, this train load using dynamic node load function. So click this dynamic node load. Now, as you can see, you can see that we, uh, you can we can select the time history load cases uh, that we just defined, just right now, and also we can choose the for forcing function, the forcing function of the train load, and of course we'll be applying this in uh, global direction, uh, global z direction, vertical direction, minus one, and then the arrival, the arrival time will be zero for the, uh, the beginning of the deck. So basically, we will be applying the dynamic node load all the way along the middle of this deck, and then click Apply. And you can see that this dynamic node load has been applied at the middle, at the starting point. But think, think about doing this um, all the way along to the end, one by one individually. This, this can be quite uh, time consuming and tedious. So let's just let's just active only activate this and then see um, what the node number this is. The node number th for this node is 397 and then it goes all the way along to 443. Okay, let's turn this off. So as I mentioned, we'll be using MCT command shell. So go to tools and MCT command shell. And then you can see that all the information or all, all the function in Mother Civil is available in this sort of a command. So for dynamic node load, it is dyn and dynamic node load. And insert if you press insert data. So you can see that um, this information which is applied to the node 397 is uh, this line. So basically what I will be doing this, doing with this is I will just simply copy this and then I will use Excel to sort of generate a series of data, series of information. Okay. So basically I already have this, but let's just delete this. Okay. 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 So this is the information that I have. So let's just uh, making it quite as neat as possible. So second column and the third column. The final one and delete this information.
So basically, uh, what this actually means is that you can see that uh, this uh, data information has been inputted uh, in this line. So the first one is the node node uh, node information, and the second one is time history load time history load cases, and the third one is the forcing function, and the next one is the direction. And the next one is arrival time, and the last one is the scale factor. So we have applied, we have created train load with 300 kilometers per hour uh, velocity. This is about 83.3 meters per second. So sp spacing between uh, two neighboring nodes was five meter in our case. So this was, this is five. So time taken to for the train to move five meter was about 0 0.06 second, and then we'll be using this plus this this again. And then we'll just gener generate this. So basically what this represents is at node 397, the, um, the arrival time will be zero, and the node 398 will be, uh, the, the arrival time will be 0 0.06, and the, the next one will be 0 0.12, and this will go all the way along to 443, where the deck finishes, okay? Okay, so, so let's just uh, generate this all the way to 443, and let's do this. So now we have all, all the dynamic node load information to so, node 397 to 443. So let's just copy this, and then let's delete this and then just copy and paste. And make sure to delete this uh, information, otherwise you'll be duplicating the information, duplicating the load, dynamic node load information. So let's just click run. So now you can see that the dynamic node load has been generated um, automatically using dynamic node load function. So this is quite a convenient tool sometimes uh, if you find it difficult to only utilize the function in the model window, you can just simply use this MCT command shell. So all the information can be handled in terms of text format. So you, you can just, uh, so if you is click insert data, you have all the information in terms of text format. So node number one, two, three, all the way to the end and the coordinate. So you can access and then you can modify all the information in terms of text format. So this is quite useful sometimes. So now we have finished um, uh, creating the time history load cases for this structure. Now what I want to do is I want to create a static train load. So using my uh, moving load analysis in my decibel. So go to load, moving load, and click Euro code. And the first step is you need to define the moving load code and then you need to create a traffic line name. So <clears throat> let's create lane one. And, and I want to create the traffic lane at the middle of this uh, at the middle of this deck. However, as you can see, there is no longitudinal uh, beam element in the middle. So what I will be doing is I will be using the beam element at the end. And then I will use this as a reference element. And then I will just apply some sort of eccentricity, the distance between uh, this reference element to the middle. So I will use this eccentricity to create the traffic lane at the middle. So. In order to do that, go to Curry and Node, and if you click the first one and then second one, 
uh, we can see the distance between these two nodes is 4.067. Okay, so I'll be applying minus 0.067 as centricity. Now I'll be using cross beam type for the vehicle load distribution. And then I have defined the cross beam structure group previously. So cross beam has been selected. And then I will start from this element all the way to the end. And then simply click OK. And then you will be able to see that the tra traffic lane has been generated at the middle of the stack information using this uh, reference element. <coughs> So let's then move on to uh, our vehicle uh, load and vehicle and click add standard and you'll be able to select the uh, uh, road bridge or footway or footbridge, road bridge or fatig. And I'll be choosing rail traffic load and then I'll choose high speed load model A and you can choose uh, you can once you come once you finish doing comparison between the static uh, static train load and the uh, dynamic train load you can then obtain dynamic factor and then you can apply the factor later on but now I will just uh, simply just leave this and then create this uh, vehicle so it's okay and what we'll be doing is we'll be creating the moving load cases. Click add. And let's name this as moving load one. And then click railway bridge. And then click add. And then you will be able to select the vehicle that you have created. And also you will be able to assign this vehicle on the lane that you just created now. So click OK, then close this. So um, the input has been uh, finished uh, with this. Uh, dynamic node load has been uh, successfully uh, inputted as well as the static uh, train load. Before uh, running, before performing the uh, analysis, we need to make one modification. So go to analysis and click moving load analysis control. And I want to provide you some tips and, and for the calculation speed. Before that, uh, we need to change the load point selection in, into all points. This is because the moving load analysis in Mother Civil is based on influence line analysis. So um, the train will be positioned at the most critical position uh, based on the influence line analysis. So influence, influence line uh, result. To, um, however, uh, if you think about a uh, train, you cannot sort of uh, split the train in the middle. So you cannot position train at this part and then deactivate at this part and then activate again at this part. So you cannot do this for the train so you, we need to choose all point. So we need to make sure the train moves all the way from the beginning to the end uh, consecutively, rather than uh, being activated at only specific position based on this. This is more uh, useful for the for the normal uh, traffic vehicle. So you have to uh, bear in mind we need to choose all point in moving load analysis control. And in terms of calculation filters, we need to, we can sort of uh, decrease the amount of calculation, and then we can significantly reduce the time of the analysis using this by applying these filters. So basically, what I've done is um, uh, I have created a deck as a structure group. So I made this as a structure group because we are only interested in the the analysis result at this uh, deck. Uh, I have made this uh, as a separate structure group. And then what this will be doing is uh, the moving load analysis will be calculated based on the group that you specified rather than the whole structure. 
So uh, this will save quite a lot of time for the analysis. And you can also utilize this uh, feature a lot of times, um, not, not only these projects. So if you have some sort of a really complicated or large uh, project, you can use uh, various filters to sort of shorten the amount of analysis rather than analyze the whole structure. So you, this is some sort of tips for you. And click OK. So all the input has been uh, finished um, for this model. So I have prepared a completed model file, exactly the same. So just to save some time to analyze the structure, I have prepared this uh, completed model file. So I'll show you how to check some of the result and then finish off. So um, for first of all, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we need to go to the vibration mode shape and then we need to sort of check the model analysis result. So you can uh, choose different model and then you can uh, activate legend and then you can check uh, various mode of the structure. So first of all, you need to make sure that the mass participation is uh, over 90% of the project. So as you can see, the mass participation is over 90%. So the number of frequencies is actually adequate. So this is fine. The analysis is valid for this uh, uh, eigenvalue analysis. OK, so let's. Um, I want to show you how to check the time history uh, analysis result. So if you go to uh, result, time history graph. Uh, before that, let's go to time history result and then displacement, velocity, and acceleration. So if you go to this, you'll be able to see um, uh, displacement result, velocity result, acceleration result for this uh, time history load cases that you have at different different time steps. So these are the time steps that we have uh, taken into account. So all different uh, time steps we can obtain various results. So these are all provided and also you can uh, create some sort of animation of this uh, uh, dynamic analysis result as well. So let's go to uh, time history graph. So, so in order to plot time history graph, we need to make some sort of function. So let's click define and modify function. And what I will be doing is um, I'll be creating a new function for displacement and velocity and acceleration. And we need to select node, node information. So if you want to uh, review uh, the displacement, acceleration, uh, displacement, velocity, and acceleration result at this specific node, you can just simply click this. So it is, the node number is 418. So let's just write it as deck acceleration at node 418 and then reference point at ground motion and then the component will be of course a global z direction and time history load case is this one and then create this uh, time history result function and then close and then let's go back to the time history graph again and then you'll be able to see the uh, the function that you the, the result function that you just created. So I click this and then add it onto this list. And then you can name this graph deck acceleration and then uh, number of decimal points. Let's just make it as one. Make it as one. So if you click graph the program will automatically generate the time history uh, graph. So the x direction will be the time and the y direction will be the acceleration. So these are the time history uh, 
example of time history uh, graph that you can uh, obtain from the analysis. So you can zoom in and you can zoom out and you can do various type various kind of stuff with this. And if you right click, you can change the x axis from time to frequency. So if you want to review this um, the acceleration result against the frequency, you can uh, review this as well, and then you can check whether this is um, uh, affecting the resonance effect um, by matching with the, the natural frequency of the structure or not. So you can check these results as well. And then you can plot more than one function. So you can plot more than one um, train speed uh, against uh, on, on the same graph. So you can use this information, you can use this function. And apart from that, uh, another stuff, uh, the, the last thing that I want to show you today is um, the comparison between the displacement from a uh, time history result and the static moving load analysis result. So if you go to deformation, displacement contour, and then you can see that the time history load cases, uh, you can access this from here, and the moving load uh, analysis result as well. And if you uh, click time history max, and then let's just review this in DZ. And then we can just uh, click uh, where the acceleration is the maximum. And also, uh, we can turn on the legend as well. And we can also uh, compare this with the moving load uh, maximum result as well. So 3680. And then this was 4.26, I think. Uh, let's compare the displacement result for the time history load case in DZ direction. The maximum uh, displacement was 5.4 millimeter for time history load cases. And then the maximum displacement for uh, static moving load analysis result was uh, 4.26 millimeters. So yeah, so you can sort of compare these results and then obtain dynamic factors to sort of apply onto the moving load analysis result later on to check various member forces and uh, displacement and bending moment, that sort of stuff as well. So uh, this is what I have prepared for the demonstration session. Um, just to um, quickly introduce and before finishing off uh, today's webinar, I want, to show, I want to introduce another feature called rail structure interaction. So uh, th this is not this is not the rail to track um, interaction. So the, the vibration will not be considered in this wizard. But using this uh, rail structure interaction uh, wizard, it is very uh, handy and convenient to create this sort of um, structure with the rail information. Um, connected to the structure. So we, we, we will be able to create this uh, structure automatically. Uh, this is like a wizard. So we have this uh, rail railway, and then this will be connected to the top of the uh, PSC gutter bridge using a multilinear elastic link. And then this um, the PSC gutter bridges will be automatically generated as well. Uh, using the section properties that you already defined. So uh, I would like to um, have another webinar based on this uh, RSI of my decibel later on. So uh, please keep uh, updated. And then this function, we will be able to plot this uh, excess stress result due to temperature variation in the deck, braking and traction and vertical load of the train load. So all of these uh, results are uh, automatically available in the report function. So um, we will try to have another webinar based on the RSI function of MIDAS later on. 
So uh, thank you for joining our webinar today. So if you have any uh, questions, uh, please ask us anytime of in the email below and I can answer some of the simple questions now. So one of the questions from Daniel about uh, the load to message function. So, so basically the reason why I have applied the scale factor as one is because that the secondary dead load is already applied in the uh, global Z direction in minus global Z direction. So I don't have to spec specify the scale factor as minus one here. So I just left it as one. So for instance, if the uh, load will be going outward, obviously you will have to consider this in minus one direction, but this is not uh, relevant in this case. And um, another question related to how to check the dynamic uh, displacement result and uh, stat static moving load analysis cases result. So if you go to deformation, uh, then again, the, this is the, the last thing that I have explained. So you choose time history um, max and then let's go to value and then just only activate maximum only so if you click OK you can see that the maximum displacement is 5.4 millimeter at this uh, position so the maximum displacement is occurring at the node uh, 311 which is here is here and the maximum displacement for the moving load is occurring at uh, 505 uh, which is this one uh, and this is 4.265 millimeter so what you will have to do is you will have to sort of um, compare the result so let's say um, node 311 and 505 and then time history result and the moving load analysis result and if you click OK uh, let's just change this so OK so for node uh, 311 the, uh, the displacement result is 5.44 for time history load case and the displacement is 3.89 for moving load um, result so what you will have to do is you will have to divide this value using this and then you will be obtaining some value something like 1.3 something and then you will be used you'll be dividing this value with this uh, simple uh, static moving load result as well and then you'll be obtaining another value about 1.08 or something and then what you will be doing is you can just choose a larger value to approach more conservatively uh, to obtain dynamic factor so you, you could, I think you will be better off uh, choosing this uh, choosing these two comparisons so if the the maximum displacement position is different so this is what you sort of what you can do to sort of uh, how to choose the dynamic factors.
Uh, so there's a more number of questions that I have received from uh, Bogdan, Thea, Konstantinos, Nuxin, and Dimitris. And I will answer these questions uh, via email. So, and also if you have any more detailed questions, uh, please uh, let us know uh, at any time um, through this email address. So UK support at mydasuser.com. I uh, will be able to sort of obtain the questions from the webinar. So we'll be happy to answer all of your all of your all of your questions uh, via email as soon as possible. So thank you for joining our webinar today and then we'll we'll be also happy to get some feedbacks from you as well. Thank you.